Hello, I'm Stephanie Stricker. Welcome to our 2023 Feast of St. Francis Xavier prayer service. We ask that you please keep yourself muted so that everyone can enjoy the, the presentation. Um, Brother Daniel Scala will now lead us in an opening prayer. Good morning, everyone. Uh, today, uh, first, we'd like to remember all those who have passed away over the past year. Brian Vetter, John Kerr, Rodney Sulser, Eric Bondenbrook, and Cornelius Hubbock. I'd also ask you to pray today for brothers John Doyle and Tom Murphy, who are in hospice care at Mary Immaculate, and for all our infirm and sick brothers. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We are holy people called by our God to ministry in this moment of history, and the Spirit of God is upon us. We pray this day for the grace to serve with the same missionary spirit, as did our founder, Theodore James Reichand, and our patron, St. Francis Xavier. Our first reading will be from the Fundamental Principles, read by Brother Francois Masungo. Va donc vers toutes les nations et fais-en les disciples. Ces paroles de l'Évangile constituent le très fond de la vision de ton fondateur. Elles contiennent la mission et le ministère de la congrégation. De plus, Théodore Jacques Reichen a choisi Saint François Xavier comme patron de la congrégation afin que le nom de cet insatiable zélateur des âmes désigne en un mot quel est le but de la congrégation. Our question for reflection is, how has the life of St. Francis Xavier impacted your personal call to mission? Our second reading, a description of charis of the Zaberian charism, is read by Brother Raphael Wanjala. A reading from the description of the Zaberian charism. We Zaberian brothers, associates and partners in mission, are a Christian community striving to fulfill the spiritual aspirations that Theodore James Reichen had for his congregation. Following the path of our founder, we are called to live ordinary lives that give witness to God's unconditional love. We believe that the Zaverian calling is a way of being put in our place a place of humility and simplicity from which we receive the grace to turn toward God, 
fall in love with God, and put ourselves in God's service as followers of Jesus Christ. Within each distinctive life choice, we are further invited to attentiveness, simplicity, flexibility, and openness to the common and spectacular flow of everyday life. We unite ourselves to God through an integrated life of both contemplation and service. Through the Saverian way, we are awakened by the Spirit of God to our own greatest potential and freely offer that giftedness in service to the gospel. Through our ministry, in particular among the poor and the marginalized, we work to help others discover their own uniqueness so they too may share the love of God with the world through their giftedness. In our spirit of hospitality, we try to be approachable and available. As true brothers and sisters welcome others and accompany them in the joys and sorrows of their lives. We'll now hear a reflection from Dr. Benjamin Horgan. Hello, my name is Ben Horgan, and I currently serve the congregation as the formation director for the XBSS Network and the director of the Zaverian Associates Program. I'm a proud graduate of St. John's High School and I'm blessed that throughout my life, the Zaverian brothers and their partners in mission have formed me to be the person that I am today. This past week, our Zaverian schools and congregation at large collectively celebrated Founders Week, a time to reflect upon and celebrate our lived history, charism, and mission of our Zaverian brothers and their lay colleagues. Two important events mark and anchor these days of remembrance and celebration. The first is the anniversary of the death of Theodore James Riken. The second is the feast of St. Francis Xavier, Riken's inspiration for the founding of the Zaverian Brothers Congregation. This year, the feast day of St. Francis Xavier also marks another important moment for our church, the beginning of the Advent season. In my prayer this week, I was reminded of a conversation I had with a spiritual director during my first year of teaching. After lamenting that nothing was going my way, my lesson plans never met expectations, and questioning whether the field of education was for me, my spiritual director stopped and said, all interruptions are invitations. Upon receiving this advice, I went silent. In the busyness of my life and certainty of my path forward, I blinded myself to the innumerable invitations God was sending me to grow closer to him and to follow his will. Thank God for interruptions. Without interruptions, we would not be gathered here today. St. Francis Xavier had at least two significant interruptions in his life that led to holy invitations. The first was meeting his roommate, St. Ignatius of Loyola, at the University of Paris. In meeting Ignatius, St. Francis abandoned his plans of being a royal diplomat to become one of the first Jesuit companions. The second was when Ignatius asked Francis Xavier to become the society's first missionary to Asia when the intended Jesuit fell ill. These interruptions were not expected and certainly were not in Xavier's plan, but through an exercise in humility and trust in God, Savior put aside his desired path to follow the invitation of the Holy Spirit. Riken, like Xavier, experienced many interruptions in his life that led to extraordinary invitations. From first meeting missionaries who worked with Native Americans on the American frontier, to his constant troubles, challenges, and shortcomings, and bringing his vision for a congregation to life, God interrupted Riken's path innumerable times to provide invitations to a greater one in communion with his providence. As we enter the Advent season within the church, we are also interrupted from the comfort and predictability of ordinary time. We are invited during this time to wait and prepare in joyful hope for the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. In the months ahead, the congregation is choosing to interrupt its normal way of proceeding by inviting all members of our Zaverian family 
to participate and reflect on our Zavarian charism and where the Holy Spirit is leading us into the future. We are taking this time not to long for the past or what has come before us, but as an invitation to look forward to see how our charism and mission-focused community of brothers, associates, and partners in mission can best serve the needs of the church and our world in these times. As we celebrate the Feast of St. Francis Xavier and observe the beginning of Advent together, let us pray that our lives may be interrupted by God, have the courage and freedom to accept the invitations of the Holy Spirit waiting for us. Hello, my Brother Daniel Scala will now lead us in a renewal of commitment to follow the Zavarian way. Good and gracious God, your spirit moves our hearts to follow the footsteps of Theodore James Riken. Today, we renew our promise to be missionary disciples, fulfilling the spiritual aspirations that Riken had for his followers. Strengthen us as we renew our commitment and give us the grace to be faithful on our journey. Theodor Riken tells us that in his own conversion, he received the grace to turn toward God, fall in love with God, and put himself in God's service as a follower of Jesus Christ. Do you recommit yourself to this threefold conversion of turning toward God, growing ever more in love with God, and placing yourself in God's service? I do. I do. I do. I do. I do. The Severian way calls us to live ordinary lives that give witness to God's unconditional love? Do you recommit yourself to finding God in the common, ordinary, unspectacular flow of everyday life through prayer and contemplation? I do. I do. I do. The Severian Way invites us to discover our own unique gifts and talents and then to help others, especially the poor and marginalized, discover their own giftedness. Do you recommit yourself to use the gifts in helping others to share the love of God with the world through their own uniqueness? I do. I do. I do. May God, who inspired Theodore Reichen to set out on this journey, guide and inspire us and bring the good work of our discipleship to fulfillment. Amen. Amen. Our intercessions are led by our Zavarian brother novices. We bring our prayers and petitions before our loving God on this Holy Feast Day, remembering all members of the Zaverian family, all of our benefactors, and especially those who have gone on their eternal reward in the past year. Our response to the petition is, loving God, make us open and receptive to the new ways of becoming of being missionary disciples. Loving God, make us open and receptive to new ways of being missionary disciples. Lorsque nous rencontrons de barrières inattendues à nous-mêmes et chez les autres, nous prions. Dieu d'amour, un réceptif ouvert à des nouvelles manières d'être des disciples missionnaires.
when being a Catholic, the church demands new courage and vision. We pray. l'efficacité continue de la mission éducative de l'Église. Notre vision, nous prions. Dieu est dans nos When our efforts falter and we are ineffective in witnessing to your unconditional love, we pray. Loving God, make us open and receptive to new ways of being missionary disciples. Lorsque nous sommes découragés ou dépassés par l'énormité de la tâche, nous prions. Dieu Loving God, we are grateful that you hear and answer our prayer. Through the intercession of our patron, St. Francis Xavier, and our holy founder, Theodore James Riken. Amen. Amen. Our closing prayer will be led by Brother Daniel Scala. Before we conclude with our closing prayer, I'd just like to offer my thanks to Stephanie for coordinating this uh, prayer service, to Ben for his insightful reflection, and to congratulate Ben as he has recently been appointed the new head of his alma mater, St. John's High School in Shrewsbury and to brothers Francois and Raphael for their readings, to our five novices who uh, who's, uh, were invested um, with a habit yesterday. Uh, thank you to all. And thank you to all of you who join us this morning. We certainly are part of an international network of men and women and young people who strive to be mission every day. You know, the lived reality of our charism that we share definitely inspires, and it's, I am deeply grateful to all of you for what you do every day to make our charism alive. So may our advent that we are now undertaking, help us to recover that treasure that our Severian charism is. And this adventure reminds me of what Thomas Merton wrote in one of his journals. He said, what we have to be 
is what we are. And that's certainly a good definition of humility, isn't it? What we have to be is what we are. So together, let us continue our journey to Bethlehem and our prayer. Oh God, who through the preaching of St. Francis Xavier brought many peoples to yourself, grant that our hearts may burn with the same zeal for the faith as our patron, Francis Xavier, so that we may be inspired to be missionary disciples. Amen. Amen.